What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about abstract classes in C Sharp, and I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. Abstract classes, you need to know what abstract classes are. You need to be able to identify an abstract class, but for the better part of your career, abstract classes are going to be relatively uncommon, but you still need to know what they are because um, it, there's a certain scenario which I'm going to introduce you guys to that you're going to need to know. And number two, people are going to ask you what abstract classes are in uh, software developer interviews. So you definitely you know, want to pay attention, but just realize that interfaces are going to be way more common uh, whenever you're trying to add functionality. And interfaces are more plug and play. Um, you bring in an interface, uh, you satisfy the contract, you dump in your methods and you know, you're bringing in all of those method abstract classes. There's a couple more rules too, but they are similar in circumstances. And I'll show you kind of the similarities and the differences between them. So let's just take a real world example. We're going to build a networking utility. We've been assigned by our boss to build a networking utility and First things first, we don't, we've been given some basic requirements, basically just, you know, build it. We just need this internal network utility for our company and we need you to be able to ping. So we'll just go ahead and we'll make a ping class. Go in here, we'll change this to public. Um, every ping, you know, every type of ping is gonna have, and this is, uh, we're actually not going to build like a real, if you want to build a real ping, uh, project. I've actually got an object-oriented uh, tutorial on how to uh, where you where I go through and show you guys how to build like a ping um, ping program, whatever ping software. It, it does like real pings, but in this case, we're just gonna kind of stub it out, make it look like uh, a, a prototype, a mock, just because we are you know we're not gonna worry about too much about our uh the actual implementation we're just going to try and get you know like a rough architecture going so we're going through here ping you know let's make a let's throw in a couple um little dummy methods in here so uh won't, won't use that yet i'll explain what that word is just for right now we'll just call this init and we'll return true if the if the uh, ping init's correctly, so if the ping starts up, once again, totally fictional, but just for this case, we're gonna have an init, and if our program actually starts up, I'll leave a little comment right here. If program if ping boots return true, so that will be our comment, and then we'll go down here, and we'll also have to be able to send the actual ping and we'll once again make it a bool just for simplicity's sake go down here return true and if it doesn't it will return false but it's always going to return true and if you want to add like a little bit more functionality in here feel free to but we just got another call uh this was only able to support you know quote unquote fictional this was only able to support IP version four. So our boss calls and says, uh, we also need to be able to support version uh, six in this as well. So we're like, you know, minor inconvenience, but we'll just go in here and um, change things so that we can add more functionality to our IP version six. So we're going in here and we're uh, make sure you code these classes too, because we're we're gonna need these. This isn't. I'm just not making you code like stupid stuff here. So uh, we're gonna go in here. IP version six. We're going to create an IP version six class, and we're gonna name it public. Change that to public. We're gonna add a prop. Uh, it's going to be an int and once again, we're going to have the host address because it's pretty much the same functionality. There will be minor differences between them. So we go in here, we have destination address. If you can kind of tell here, we're see we're, we're duplicating a lot of code. And if you're duplicating a lot of code like this and it's not, you know, worrying you, you should always realize that if you're duplicating a lot of code and 
we literally just can paste paste this in here because like once again once again we're just duplicating code but the one thing that we do notice that's different is that the ip version this is going to have a different imp implementation so the ip version 6 versus the ip version 4 is going to be different let me see here it's going to have a different implementation the ip version 4 is going to have a different implementation too so this one's going to be different different implementation implementation so that's going to have but this one is going to be the same so these the init's are going to be the same like the almost the exact same functionality in order to init our program but the send ping is a little bit different we're going to have to learn how to send pings to different um through different ways and the code that's in going to be within our send ping is going to be a little bit different so we notice that we're duplicating all this code one thing that we can do is actually use a refactoring technique called extract to class. So basically, we're just going to create a top level class to in, uh, house all of this um, code. And it's very simple. We're just going to take all of our common code and we're going to extract it into our base class. Don't know what that is. So. We could just kind of run through here very quickly. Base ping, IP version six, IP version four have the same exact properties. We can just toss that in there. Then let's see. We also need to we also need need to make this an abstract class. And we can delete that. And we can inherit from our base ping. We can also do the same for our IP version four. Because we have this in our top level class, we don't need any of this code. This, all of this code is going to be housed in our base ping class. And it's going to look way better. And that's kind of the whole entire idea of um, object or, or inheritance in abstract classes, is that it's going to extract all that functionality into a higher level class. So our bottom level classes don't look like crap and we don't have to repeat ourselves as often. So we're going through here, made it abstract. So trying to see here, I think we could already implement it. Let's just see what happens if we try to implement our base ping class. And if you don't remember anything out of uh, from my video, this is probably the most important part. So we're just going to say, well, what if we're just a new programmer and we try to go into our base ping class, we didn't really see the IP version four or the IP version six classes and we just went into the base ping class and say, oh sweet, I've got uh, everything I need right here. And this is very common. You will see, this will happen all the time in programming. So we've got our base ping right here. We're going in, we brought in our console app and once again, we can't use it. That's the whole entire idea of an abstract class. You just can't, uh, you can't instantiate it and it's basically the compiler's way of saying, hey, this class isn't designed for you to be, you know, trying to build stuff off of it. This is more so uh, for um, purposes that, so we can inherit and we don't have to actually have all of this junk, you know, and repeat ourselves. But this is just Microsoft or the compiler's way of saying, hey, this class isn't designed for that. Go lower and start looking at lower level classes because if you try and pull stuff out of here, you could have a bad time. And that's like 80% of it right here. But you also, in order to realize like the true extent and the true power, I'm going to show you exactly kind of like what the true power is. So we go in here. Let's just say we want to use our init. We can easily just go into our init right here. Just pull out, uh, pull out all that and it will immediately implement it in our IP version for class two, and we don't have to worry about that. And I'll just go here. So you can see whenever you are, whenever classes are inheriting from each other, 
certain functionality is going to be wanted and certain functionality is not going to be wanted. And abstract classes give you more play about what you can actually send down to your classes. An interface, and I said, you know, we're going to talk about an interface. An interface is you throw that sucker in there, you implement it, and you don't have a choice. <laughs> you must, and you must use this. And so we've inherited, so we've got our init right here, and everything will init. So we've already, you know, demonstrated that the biggest reason we don't want to use our base class is because it's an abstract class, and we're not supposed to do that. But Let's just see what happens, IP version six. So we'll just go down here. We'll implement our own IP version six. Then we'll go down here and let's see if we have access to our init. Yes, we have access to our init and we can init our programs because it's available within this base class. But key point here, what if I, for one reason, and this will give you some uh, a lot of flexibility. What if I wanted to change these? Well, abstract classes give you the option. Whenever you see the word virtual, think option. Virtual is going to give you the option of putting it into your lower level classes. So if I wanted to come in here and I said, hey, well, maybe my IP version six needs to init in a different fashion, what you could go, you could go down here and you could actually change it. So it will give you the option of changing it. And that's a very important concept. So we go down here, we're gonna have bool, go bool, and then we can do init, and then we could change it. Or uh, I'm sorry, or put override. It's not, we don't put virtual right there. You put override and then you could change it, but you have to return the bool too. So let's just say for this, whatever instance, we're going to return false. Don't know why, but more or less just a way to be able to demonstrate the capabilities. So that is what a virtual is. Virtual is going to give you the option to send it down to the other classes. Now, what we have here is we have an abstract. So we have public, so instead of abstract, or uh, instead of virtual, we're going to have abstract. Then we have init, cannot declare a body because it is marked abstract. Oh yeah. So with abstract classes, you don't actually um, put code. You, it's almost, whenever you see the, this abstract word right here, this is basically saying, this is almost like a contract in itself. And you saw this uh, little red squiggly line. So if you say abstract, think strict, like you must, if you are going to implement abstract, you must implement these, me these methods. You must implement these members. With an abstract class, this is just declaring the abstract class. Like, so if you, you know, put this abstract class onto another, or if you inherit from it, it's going to inherit all these, but you need to be explicit with what type of abstract methods that you want to send down to your lower uh, classes. So whenever we use the word abstract, just notice that this part lights up right here, and that's because we haven't satisfied the contract. We haven't satisfied the abstract contract. So we're gonna go, oh, sorry. So we're gonna go down here, and it's not wanting to abstract to the interface. So let me see. Does not implement, implement. Usually it just lets you. So let me just see here. Public pool. Init. Turn true. Okay, here we go, finally got it working. Sorry, I don't know what that was about, but finally got it working. So we go in here, so like I said, abstract, then we have to return bool. And then, because this part, oh, that's probably was it because I didn't save it and it had to check it. So the same exact thing is happening on our IP version four. So implement, and once you implement it, 
you don't have, like I said, you don't have any other choice. So we're gonna go in here, return true. You could put any type of uh, other thing that you want in there, but just for um, brevity's sake, I'm just going to, so we're gonna go in here, console.writeLine, going to init, and once again, we get all our init, then we're going to go in here, bring in IP version six, and then we're going to send ping. And I'm just going to copy these down. Make sure I put parentheses. Then we go through here, we're gonna change all these just to IP version four. See if this works. Put our parentheses right here. And that is not spelled correctly. All right, let's go ahead, bring this thing up. Let's run it. The moment of truth. All right, so go through here. It's gonna declare our objects, we're gonna step through, true, which is what we want, true, we're gonna go down through here, same exact thing. Anyways, hope that cleared things up for you. That's my uh, tutorial on abstract classes. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.